Hi, I'm Jerry Jones. I'm going to walk you through the history of the Brooks Telescope here for the next few moments. Actually, the history of the telescope stems back to 1934 when the telescope was built by a telescope builder who resided in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The telescope, which is called a 12 and a half inch Newtonian telescope, is custom made. And the ironic part about it is that a number of household items were used to, to construct the uh, telescope. The 12 and a half inch mirror actually was hand ground by the builder himself. And today that curvature of the mirror competes against anything that's brand new of any telescope today. Actually on the telescope too, and what I find so cool about it is that the clock drive, which moves the telescope to counter our rotation, is an RCA record player motor. And uh, that has an adjuster arm to speed and to slow it down. Also in a telescope is a Singer sewing machine belt and pulley to drive the main gear with that clock drive. The pier is actually made out of two pieces of sewer pipe and the rolled aluminum is uh, of course used for the tube. Now how did Earl Brooks get involved in this is that Earl uh, had grew up in Green Bay, Wisconsin and he bought this telescope in 1962. Earl Stevens Brooks was born in Green, Green Bay, Wisconsin in 1930. 1965 he moved to York, Pennsylvania with his Newtonian 12 and a half inch telescope. He lived right in the center city of York but, and stored his telescope in the neighbor's garage. When he wanted to use it, he simply opened the garage doors, rolled the telescope out onto the driveway, and observed. And certainly being in center city of York, you don't have the dark skies that astronomers look for, but believe me, Earl did 100% usage of that sky and his capability. It was during that point in time, in about 1969, that I got to know Earl. Because I was then a teenager, I walked from my house to church, and Earl's house was about halfway between the two and I walked past his house numerous times at nighttime and see this gentleman on a 10-foot ladder peering through this large cannon. And one night I did get the courage to go over and tug on his pant leg while he was on the ladder and say, hey mister, can I look through your telescope? And that was the start of a, a great relationship between Earl and I. From that point in time, he saw I had a big interest in astronomy and he started to teach me how to find things by star hopping. After all, the Brooks Telescope did not have any computerized items on it, so it was strictly by learning the roadmap to find the different objects. And Earl even got to the point where he would show me an object, show me how to find it, and then he would accidentally bump the telescope and say, now you find it. And that was a big confidence builder for me in my teenager days. 1970, Earl actually awarded me my Astronomy Merit Badge for Boy Scouts, which was kind of a, a, a big thing, which I still have that card today. Earl used that site until about 1973, when the telescope was moved to the Astro Astronomical Society of Harrisburg's Observatory in Lewisbury, Pennsylvania. And from there, the telescope was used for about 15 years before it got moved to its destination here in York County. Earl was being, uh, had moved to a different house in York, had no place to store the telescope. At the Harrisburg, Observatory. The telescope was used for planetary research, occultation timings, and the timing of shadows during lunar eclipses going over the craters. In 1988, the York County Parks proposed an observatory for John Rudy County Park, closer to York. And as part of that agreement, Earl accepted the challenge that the 12 and a half inch telescope would be moved to that new facility. In late 1988, the telescope was moved into this facility right here and with the roll off roof. Even with the 10 foot ladder, the roof rolled down and people still climbed the 10 foot ladder to observe uh, the various objects. I'll show you how inventive Earl Brooks was. He never failed anything that he attempted to do. Tremendous bike rider, for example. But one of my favorite stories about his telescope was that while the telescope was here at Rudy Park, he did buy a new finder scope. But the finder came with no crosshairs. So what did Earl Brooks do? He pulled out two of his hairs out of his head and glued them in the, eye, in the finder to literally have cross hairs. After 2012, the York County Astronomical Society 
uh, had newer equipment coming in to replace the older equipment, and the Brooks Telescope had to be moved out of the facility. Thanks to the Tri-State Astronomers, they took the telescope from Rudy Park down to their facility close to Hagerstown and did use it for some observing. And of course today, the Brooks Telescope is finding a new home in the Discovery Station in Hagerstown, Maryland, in memory of longtime member Jim St Stankovic of the Tri-State Astronomers. Hope you enjoy the display, the Brooks Telescope, a lot of fond memories and a lot of history.